I will jump on the chat. We so are okay. live. Minty, the show is yours. Ooh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Straight From The Strip. I am your host, Minty Betts, here with Kelly in Vegas, who will be hopping in the chat to get your relevant questions answered live on the show. Your How are you doing, relevant Kelly? Relevant questions. I love that. No, I, I try to answer <laughs> all the questions, but yes, uh, we're talking all things UFC today. But of course, if you have any other questions for Yanni, feel free to drop them in the chat, and I will try to get those answered for you guys. Exactly. Also here with us is Yanni the Greek. You may have seen him on the UFC pre-shows on ESPN or ESPN+. Plus. Yanni, how you doing? Never better. It's been a good week so far. I lost last Saturday on my UFC card. I split, went three and three, ended up losing juice and, you know, bet sizing was the negative. Um, but with that said, ended up winning my bets that day on Breeders' Cups and didn't lose money for Saturday. That's the one thing I'm kind of against daily packages. I get it. Some guys just want to bet on a Saturday or on a mm -hmm. Sunday with football, so I get it. But with that long-term approach, which is truly the goal to try to win long-term, I, I, that's where I, I'm against that daily package. So I feel bad for guys that bought Saturday that at UFC Pass and didn't make money and get subscribers did. And then the next day we hit a 10 to one NASCAR race and hit like six or seven straight soccer plays. And those guys that bought Saturday, unfortunately don't get the benefit from that. Instead they lost money. And I hate when that happens. And that's why I always try to stress that I can't promise you I'm going to win for you tonight. If you're looking long-term, a guy who wins long-term gives you the best chance to win tonight, mm -hmm. obviously, but with that said, you know, I, that's why I don't push big games and locks and all that nonsense. I just try to win more than I'm going to lose and long term do that over and over again. And, and hopefully it leads to some money at the end of the year. And right now that's where it's at. So going into this Saturday's UFC, see if we could do some damage. That's right. Yanni, you have two plays for UFC Fight Night locked and loaded on wagertalk.com. And you'll most likely be uploading more throughout the week as you see value in the lines, right? So be sure to hop on that, everyone. Wager. Fire, well, so fire three more today. Oh, wow. Three more? Yeah. On top I, of the yeah, I, I got that. Yeah, I, I got that text this morning, Minty. <laughs> yeah, I got five yeah. bets out. I, you could wait because there's so much money being bet late. But at the same time, I got a feeling where some of the sharp money is going to go. So I wanted to get out ahead of those line moves and able to get down earlier today. So we wow, got some action. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. So last week we had some technical difficulties where we just released a quick UFC betting basics from Yanni's perspective. And everyone was kind of upset that Yanni didn't give out any picks. So we apologize for that. And this week is strictly just going to be his thoughts and insights and his best bet so let's go this week we've got UFC fight night headline by Justin Poirier versus Dan Hooker but first I want to ask you really quick Yanni do you always bet on the main event or give out a play for the main event just because casual bettors typically look forward to that one the most no I'll give an opinion if I don't have a bet and what I always stress is if I'm not willing to back my own opinion with my money you probably shouldn't either um mm -hmm. but with that said everyone wants to know how you feel about the main event and for the show I do on Fight Pass and for a lot of the stuff I do with UFC, obviously they want me to cover the main event. Um, but right. with that said, they always tell me, listen, if you don't have a bet on the side, a prop, a total round, that's what we want you to say. We never want you mm -hmm. to give out a pick that you don't feel confident about. So right. that's the, the beauty of it, that I'm not forced to give a pick. But also, I, I like to look at the main event almost like Monday Night Football, where it's the last game of the week betters that are behind look to catch up betters that are ahead look to double up and a lot of times that line is affected by public money more than anything else because of the overwhelming amount of money that's bet on that particular fight and that usually equates to a little more value for sharper betters that are looking for those inefficiencies Got it. All right. So first up, let's talk about the co-main event, which is a welterweight bout between Mike Perry, who is a minus 285 favorite versus Mickey Gall, a plus 230 dog. Gall typically wins by submissions and Perry's got strong takedown defense. I'm pretty interested to see how this one plays out. And I'm kind of feeling this goes the distance because of a power struggle. Yanni, give me your thoughts on how you think this one will play out. You got two guys 
with negative strike differential when it comes to significant strikes. So they get hit more than they land. In the case of Mike Perry, it's because he's willing to take two to land one. That's his style. In the, as far as Mickey Gall, he's just not a technical striker. So if he's going to go up against the UFC level strikers, more times than not, he's going to be at his disadvantage. But if he takes you to the mat, that's his world. And that's where he ultimately has the greatest advantages. Um, the narrative around this fight is simple. Not even, let's not even break the X's and O's because everyone knows what it's about. It's grappler versus striker. Will the grappler be able to take him down and submit him? Or will the striker be able to knock him out before that happens? So let's put that to the side. The real story is how prepared is Mike Perry for this fight? We know he's only going to have at least that's what he says, only one person in his corner. That one person is his new girlfriend. He right. got, yes. He's gotten divorced of late. He has a new girlfriend. She seems to be his right-hand woman, and she's there training with him all the time. Now, obviously, he's going to different gyms. As he said, he's trained with different guys, but that night, she's going to be the one in his corner. So the, the narrative out there is, how serious is he taking this? You know, did he just train on his own with his girlfriend? That's the million dollar question. If you look at the betting line, it opened with Mike Perry minus 150. Within 15 wow. minutes, it went to Mike Perry minus 275. And now we're yeah. looking at Mike Perry minus 310. So it doesn't seem like that narrative is scaring betters all that much. Um, uh -huh. I expect to see Mickey Gall money come in. Because he's attractive as a plus two and a half, you know, or higher yeah. underdog. He's live. And we know in that co-main event spot, those underdogs have done well. It's actually that one spot where the favorite has won the least amount straight up. Um, but I, I just think Gull is at such a disadvantage in the striking. Even though it's a small cage and he should be able to get his hands on Perry, I'm not sure how he's going to stop that brawl of Perry, those shots. I mean, he's a very, very dangerous, creative striker. And finally, I would look at the, the total rounds. I wish they made the mistake of putting it out at two and a half because I would have dumped both pockets and probably looked for an extra quarter on the ground to bet the under just to wow, double okay. up my money. Um, but it's at one and a half. So they did a really good job there. That changes everything. With that said, most finishes come early. In fact, 30%. In round one, your chances of a finish are about 30%. When you get to round three, those chances are cut in half. So if you don't get that finish early, it rarely ever happens. It's not like boxing where you systematically break your opponent down over 10 or 12 rounds. That's the difference with MMA. So again, I was hoping for two and a half. I would have blasted the under at one and a half. I still got to consider it. And I could understand the love for Mickey Gall, but I'm in no, I, I, I just don't think I'm going to fade Perry. I don't see the reason to fade Perry in this uh, spot. VR, I want to chime it's in. It's a step up for goal. I want to chime in real quick. I'm looking, and even um, some other books have Perry as high as 325 here. We all know that wow. I don't like laying that kind of juice. And it appears if I was going to bet Perry, I may be a little late to the party. Can you recommend, I know we've talked about this before, where sometimes if you like two sizable favorites in the UFC, people will parlay them. Can we segue that mm -hmm. with, I know Minty has a whole list of other guys and we can talk about that later, but maybe someone to put him in a parlay with that you would recommend. Uh, because I do like the Perry side here, but at this point, I feel like I'm a little too late. So is it yeah. stay away uh, from you're still time? Right. I wouldn't lay 300. Okay. I wouldn't urge anyone to lay 300. If you're going to bet the Perry side, I recommend you get creative and bet him by way he's going to win this fight. We know it's about a minus 300. The market says about 75% chance this will not go to the judges. So if you bet Mike Perry, you may want to look inside the distance. If you bet Mickey Gall, you may want to look inside the distance. Because if he wins this, it's going to be by submission. I don't think he's going to outpoint Mike Perry unless he takes him down in all three rounds and just holds him there, which I don't think it's going to be the case. So you could look at it that way or else, like you said, parlay it with another big money line um, that looks like, I hate to use the word lock, but at least high probability of cashing, the highest. Mm -hmm. And I think you got to look to Brendan Allen against Kyle Dawkins. Dawkins is from Philly, love the guy, but I, I, I 
had the privilege of doing the contender series for the USC this past summer. And these guys were on there. So I, I did a little a research prior to that, watched them fight and have followed them since. And I think Brendan Allen at this point in their careers is just leaps and bounds ahead of Kyle Dawkins. Dawkins is probably the number one guy in Pennsylvania right now, but he's not the number one guy on the East Coast or a little further out. He's more of a regional fighter right now who's gotten his UFC shot, uh, but I don't know if he's UFC ready just yet. He didn't get that contract after the Contender Series, let's put it that way. Uh, so I think Brendan Allen's probably a good spot to look at. Oh, okay. So literally when I said uh, I look to this to go the distance, you're on the opposite side. So no, that's good to know. Good to know. <laughs> you're, you're getting over two to one. You know what I mean? That it, it, You're no. going... If, by going against the narrative, which is something I always suggest doing, especially when mm -hmm. it comes to prop bets, because you're almost never going to get the best of it, betting mm -hmm. the narrative. And as far as this goes, with the no being minus 300, I wouldn't recommend that bet. I think that's a fair price. I think it's right where it should be. Probably three out of four times, this does end inside the distance. But it's priced correctly. So you, you may want to look to the other side. So I don't disagree with you, Minty, especially you're getting a good money line return on that by going mm -hmm. against the narrative and getting the judges involved. Because, again, Gal's a tough kid. He's a big kid. He's going to have a reach advantage, may have a little size advantage. If Perry can't get him out of there, this can go three rounds. And with it being right. a smaller page, if Gal takes him down and, and, you know, hugs him for a couple of minutes, he could squeeze out some rounds. Yeah, you exactly. Know? All right. Ne yeah. Next up, I'd like to talk about the main event, which is a lightweight bout that is very much talked about, and we're all hoping for a very exciting one as well. Hoye has success both upright and on the mat as Hooker's more of a kickbox boxer and wants a chance at the title. So I feel like if Dan Hooker has a chance at winning, he needs to keep Dustin Poye standing up most of the night. I really like the favorite here, though. I feel like he's a more well-balanced fighter. So can you give us your thoughts on the main event between Poye and Hooker? I think you're right. Uh, I think if it goes to the ground, even though Hooker's capable down there, for sure, um, he's slick. You know, I, I just think Poirier is the better grappler, the better mm -hmm. wrestler, and I think he'll have some advantages if it goes there. I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. You have, you know, Hooker with almost 80% takedown defense in the UFC, um, yeah. and I don't really think he's going to look to take Poirier down. Uh, so I agree with you. I think it's going to be a standing type fight. And a hooker looks like a live dog. Um, I was a little surprised to see the money just move in one direction, in the direction of Poirier. I, I, I think that looks like the right side. But I thought you would see some money come in for hooker because of the recency bias. What have we seen last? The last thing we saw is hookers looked pretty good. He's won three straight you know, in a row, the last one of great fight. He's got two performance of the night bonuses in those last three fights. Well, on the flip side, Poirier hasn't fought in what since September of 2019. And he right. lost before he got subbed in the third round. So there's a little recency bias there, but I'm not seeing it. So I'm interested to see come Saturday, if they're going to see money start coming in on the Dan Hooker side, because listen, the kids, 10 and four inside the UFC. He's won three in a row. He's won seven of his last eight, five of those by finish. So he's done everything right. Um, he's dangerous. He's going to have a, a three inch height advantage here, a three inch reach advantage here. Uh, he's only been a dog one other time. So you need to keep that in perspective. He's been a favorite and the role switches and, and why you have to look at what the lines were in their fights, because listen, if a guy's minus 400, in six straight fights, he probably should be 6-0 and oh after those fights. No one should be surprised that a minus 400 goes 6-0 and oh if he's favored that much all those fights. But Hooker, that's not the case. I'm not saying that with Hooker, but it is a new thing. Just like last week, why did I go against Mata Ferry? She was in the favorite slot, something she hadn't been. She's only been, she was a favorite three times in 18 pro fights. So you're asking them to do something new. We talk about it in football all the time and other sports and not enough in MMA. So now you're asking the hooker to come through as an underdog. Again, he's only been an underdog once. I think it was in his second UFC fight in a fight that he won. Um, his leg kicks, his calf kicks, extremely dangerous. He's going to have to use them if he's going to win this fight. But Poirier, man, take that Khabib fight out of the equation and this line should be even higher. 
That's yeah. the problem. And that's where I agree with you that it looks like Poirier's fight. It looks like he's just going to be the stronger guy in there. The smaller cage means he's not going to have a problem getting inside something he likes mm -hmm. to do. He's not going to allow Hooker to fight at range like he likes to do. There's a lot of things to like on the Poirier side and possibly even the price. Because, again, I think if not for the Khabib loss, we'd be looking at about you know, minus 250 opener. And then the market would probably decide not a minus 170 opener and now looking at minus 220. And finally, the total rounds is four and a half um, with the mm -hmm. under minus 240 favorite. Probably no value there. The nose minus right. 270 also. Uh, but I'd be surprised if the judges get involved here. These are two finishers. Really? Okay. Wow. I was just going to ask that next. All right, Yanni. So what is your best bet on the card, either the preliminary or the main card? All right, I fired a couple bets. I even have like a, a, a nice almost three to one underdog. But um, let me get a pick that, that I that's a coin flip. A minus I gave him out at minus one oh five. You probably could still get him at minus one ten or so. Let me look okay. now. Oh shit, it's up to minus one twenty. Okay. I still think there's some value. I made my true line minus one fifty. Um second mm -hmm. fight on the card, you set Zala over Jordan Griffin. Jordan Griffin, obviously very well known. Um, 25 professional fights, three fights inside the UFCs, one and two in those. Uh, but he's one of those guys that people know the name. He's been around MMA for a very long time. 30 years old now, negative strike differential. Zala, if you saw him in his debut, he looked awesome. What I love the most about him is how relaxed he looked. Forget mm -hmm. the skill. The skill set's going to continue to improve and evolve. He's only 23 years old. So each time we see him in the octagon, he's going to be a new fighter. The trajectory when you're between 20 and 25 of improvement is phenomenal. I mean, is ridiculous. From one fight to the it's almost where you shouldn't even pay much attention to their last fight because the opportunity to improve is going to be there each and every time. So I think this kid's only going to get better. I could see him using those leg, that left high kick, possibly landing that left high kick after he starts breaking down those legs with that calf kick. I think he's going to force Griffin to drop those hands, start protecting those legs, and that's where that quick left high kick might come in. It's very dangerous. This kid's got it. But more importantly, he keeps his hands low, so he looks like he's a target, but it's because of his movement, his range, his footwork. He's able to do that and not get hit flush. I love his style. I think he's got a high ceiling early in his mm -hmm. career. Um, we're getting him at a discount. Again, because this is only his second UFC fight, we're getting him at a coin flip. I think at least minus 150, he wins this fight six out of 10 times, probably even a little bit higher than there. Look for Zalal to get it done uh, over Jordan Griffin. Lay the minus 120 where it sits right now. I think that's a good bet. VR, the group chat wants oh. to know, uh, actually, this one's from Milan. The three <laughs> to one that you almost laid, is was that karma worthy? Karma worthy? When you said you no, 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 I, I, I could see why people like karma worthy. I'm a huge Louis Pena fan, so I'm not going to fade him. I thought he actually, uh, he got robbed against Frabola, and I'm still mad over that fight because I had a big bet on Louis Pena. He beat Frabola. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> um, <laughs> and here he's going to have his height advantage, his youth, his reach. Again, worthy looked great knocking out Devontae Smith like he did, but until he knocked out Devontae Smith in that first round, his striking wasn't all that flashy or impressive, but it was possibly because they knew each other. They were training partners forever. They even almost hugged inside the ring, so I, inside the octagon. So I get it. It's tough to fight someone you're good friends with. Um, but uh, again, I, I'd like to paint your side. The only advantage Worthy has, I believe, is his experience and the fact the guy's a finisher. I mean, he goes for the kill, and that either leaves him losing by finish or winning by finish. I just think uh, Pena, I think that line's justified. I haven't bet it, just to be clear, disclaimer. I don't have any bet on that fight at all as we speak. But I do think the line is justified of about minus 250 to minus 300. 
Okay. Any more um, questions from the chat, Kelly? Uh, or anything now, you want to ask? Everybody just wants to know who the almost two to one underdog was. That was our three to one underdog. <laughs> I'm guessing uh, it was Barella, if I had to guess. Uh, VR smile says it all. Next. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Yanni, is there a fight night next weekend? I haven't looked, there or is, is it just right, you have a week? UFC 251. It's, uh, okay, so basically, we're yep. it looks yeah. like we got a, a, UFC 251, yeah, still Saturday, right? yeah, so we have basically a, a, a nice little, I don't know, 12, off? 13 break, day break, yeah, like a week, wow. over a week off. Okay, Yanni, I don't know, I don't think the fight card is really that set yet, but is there anyone you're looking at in this? So it looks like it looks like 251, or is it too early to say? For 251, it's uh, the main the main event's going to be Gilbert Burns versus, and I'm going to butcher his first name, so I'm just going to say Usman. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, we're actually taping uh, USC on the line show on Friday for USC 251. That'll be on Fight Pass. Oh, uh, so I'm I'm. I'm actually started working on that card already because we are doing that show on Friday. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I haven't bet anything yet. I haven't created my bets for that show. I'm being 100% honest. I'll probably do that tomorrow, tomorrow night. Um, but looking at that main event, I I'll be straight with you. For me, it's a simple, it's Usman or past situation. Um, and here's why right now Burns is, uh, how could I best explain Let's say Bitcoin November 2018, where okay. it's fear of missing out. You know, we, it's, it's a great investment vehicle. We're seeing it skyrocket. Its price is at its highest it could be. Everybody wants a piece of it. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. December, January, February followed, and we saw the decline. The because decline. when your stock's at its highest, that's when you don't want to be buying. Even if he wins this fight, you're buying him at his highest, Gilbert Burns, right now, because of the recency bias. There's no fighter hotter than Burns in all of the UFC right now. Let's face it, he's 2-0. and He won in March. He, he won in May. He beat mm -hmm. two welterweights in Maya and then Woodley. Um, he's getting a title shot. He won as an underdog for people. He cashed. They have a good taste in their mouth. He's an underdog again against someone that he knows. It looks as if this is another great spot to bet him. But the betting line doesn't give you any value here. Usman is being extremely disrespected um, in this spot. He should be a much, much bigger favorite. In fact, yeah. if you wanted to bet right now, they already have lines. What Usman would be against Masvidal. What Usman would be against Conor McGregor. You know what Usman would be against Conor McGregor right now? About a minus 350 to 400 favorite. Wow. You know what Usman wow. would be against Masvidal? Between a minus 260 and minus 300 favorite. So again, you're getting Burns at his highest price. Win or lose. That's nothing. I, I that's a bet I'm never going to make. Never do I want to bet a team, uh, a back an athlete when their price is at their highest. It just, it's not. A, it doesn't make any sense to me. So for mm -hmm. that reason, I haven't bet Usman yet. But it, for me, it's a favorite or pass situation where most times, okay. you know, you say it's dog or pass. This I believe is a favorite or pass spot. I really do. Minty, are, are okay. We done? Another. Sorry. Go ahead. We're done. Okay. Oh, well, I was going to say another another bout that I was looking at was the women's straw weight, the Jessica Andrade and the Rose Nama Yunus. That one seems interesting, too, but we can talk about that one later. Um, but that's just another fight that just caught my eye. But, yes, we're basically done okay. here. That's kind of all I had, unless you had anything yeah, else. Yeah, I want to give out a couple of other VR's other picks, um, just because this one's about to be starting. Uh, VR, do you want to give out you, – you mentioned before we went live that you sent me some soccer. We're already 1-0 for the day. Uh, I think you. I don't, know. I don't care. There, there's a still yeah, there's still one uh, bout left. It looks like it's the series A. I have Atlanta. How is that? How you say that? Or is that a typo? Let me look. At, at, oh, it no, it's Atlanta. Atlanta. Serie A. Yeah, yeah. Italy Serie A. Over three. Yeah. Lazio versus Atalanta. 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 Thank you. I'm like. I thought it was a typo too. I, I, I thought it was Atlanta, but I was like, uh, okay, this is wrong. This shows how much I know about soccer, which is absolutely zero. All I know is we're one and zero to start the day. I'm super happy about that. 
Uh, I just added a little bit more to the silver. I couldn't tell you what their jerseys look like. I, I had to look, honestly, first I looked at English Premier League, then Spain La Liga, and then I'm like, oh, wait, Lazio, that's Italy. Then I looked at Italy. <laughs> Seriously. I'll take it. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that. And then also, VR, do you have – I gave out uh, ooze over Jason Day today. That was what was given to me. So people kind of asking if you have any char, uh, sharp – I don't have any golf. golf, man. I wish I did because we've been winning the golf, at least like – not crushing it, but winning more matchups than we're losing or kind of breaking even. I don't think we did damage last week. I think we may have even lost a, a unit. But primarily, golf has been good. I haven't, I haven't gotten anything. Usually, I get it like Wednesday evening. Um, sometimes earlier I'll get it, but a lot of times it comes Wednesday a little That's later. That's interesting that the Sharp guys wait until Wednesday night to bet these matchups. Huh? They don't fire as soon as they come out? The, 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 I was getting the early stuff. Um, a lot of that was smaller limits, and I was finding myself on a lot of setups ah. that the line was coming back the other way okay. and, and betting just as much. So I've been real cautious with those early moves. Okay. That's why I don't like giving them out until I get the late stuff. When they match, sometimes I end up taking 20 cents to 30 cents the worst of it. But I rather get the match the, is a much higher winning percentage when it's when I see it's legit than being on the wrong side and being like, fuck, why did I use it? <laughs> Been there, done that. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys. Minty, I will let you close the show. Okay guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, so no that show, was no show about next it. week uh, because there is no UFC unless you guys can come up with yeah. a really good thing that you want us to do something awesome with because there is no UFC. So uh, drop some ideas yeah. in the chat and Johnny Detroit will make us do a show. Why am I super red today? Uh, I guess too much coffee for breakfast. All right, guys. <laughs> have a great day. <laughs> yes, have a great day, guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe Thanks to Wake Up Talk TV here on YouTube. Thank you, Yanni. We'll see you. You'll be on Friday, right, on ESPN? Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll see you on TV then. Uh, my suggestion for next week is maybe we all play Uno, and then we'll see who wins because I'm really good at Uno now. <laughs> all right, guys.